Hey YouTube peeps, good morning from Arcadia, Louisiana this morning. Uh, as we head west, we're gonna be uh, going through a little bit of Bonnie and Clyde memorabilia. That is right. This is actually where everything ends. So, spoiler, if you haven't seen the movie from, I think, 1967, or you don't know about how it turned out, you might not want to watch this, because we're going to go back in time. This spot right here is where Bonnie and Clyde, the infamous couple duo of bank robbers, uh, were embalmed here. Uh, we'll be visiting where they were actually killed later, but they were brought up here to this city to be embalmed in, I think, 1934. They saved some old uh, newspaper clippings here. Yeah, they uh, they robbed a lot of banks. They were they were quite the bandits, quite the couple. There's a picture of them there. Not to be confused with uh, Thelma and Luis, a much uh, later movie, and I think it was uh, all fiction. Bonnie and Clyde are a nonfiction story, and uh, their spree ended here. But we'll get on the road and go visit some other places uh, as well. Uh, it's funny because this city, Arcadia. Uh, along with a lot of other stories that have to deal with controversial crimes and stuff like that, they wanted absolutely nothing to do with Bonnie and Clyde back in the 30s. Absolutely just tried to remove themselves from having any connection. And then sometime in the 60s and 70s when it, be when it started to become more popular to talk about uh, history of crimes, I guess, they, they, they jumped right on the bandwagon. They're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, include us, we're part of it too. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of driving today. Uh, for the simple fact that I'm going to probably park when I get there probably park for two nights in a row So I'll be making up double the mileage as usual today driving about 65 to 70 miles total by the end of the day But we're heading west So just for reference here I've done a couple videos in the past where I put a lot of work into showing off the uh, the filming locations um, one of my more popular ones was the Breaking Bad one from Albuquerque where I spent about two days research trying to find as many of the filming locations as possible and then I drove the RV around, this was uh, prior to having the scooter, and I shared that with you. And it was so much work to put that video together and if you're not even a fan of the show then it's hard to relate. It's like I don't really care Eric about all the filming locations. So what I'm not going to do is drive around and find all the spots from the 1960s a movie about Bonnie and Clyde, but I want to show you one spot that's right next to the museum, and that's this old gas station. This gas station was used in the movie. That was, geez, five decades ago? I believe those are the same exact gas pumps. The roof could use a little work, but uh, we'll go over and read this little sign over here. It says, historic site from the payphone where you are standing, Texas Ranger Frank Hammer called Colonel Lee Simmons and said, then job is done, Bonnie and Clyde are dead. The bodies will be in Arcadia, but none of the officers were injured and it's over. Little did the officers realize the real story will live forever. So I gave you one filming location. I wanna go check out this museum and see, they might have a few relics from the 30s in there. Okay, so on the same exact block here, you've got two museums. You've got the Bonnie and Clyde Ambush Museum right here. And right next door to that, you've got the authentic Bonnie and Clyde Museum. And this one is only open Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 to 5. We are not on one of those days, so we are going to the Paid Museum. It's factual. No myth. You want to say the truth? The real story. I'll watch a little film before I go to the museum. Uh, this is Bonnie's hat. Her tam. that was found in the death car. Kind of a gruesome recreation here. <laughs> but they wanted the public to see their bodies after the death. So they allowed the public to come see them, I guess. That is really creepy. I forgot to say viewer discretion advised. Because <laughs> they've done some gruesome recreations here. Wow. This is the actual car though, guys, by the way. They actually have the death car here in this museum. And then someone made a recreation, I guess, basically putting bullet hole stickers on the car, on this car, to kind of show. Here's the ones that came out the passenger side. It said that Bonnie actually had more bullet wounds than Clyde. 
they had to go through the door, go through his body, and then hit her. She had more bullet wounds, though. Pretty cool museum. I spent about a half hour in here and just wanted to share a couple clips with y'all. Uh, we're gonna get on the road and go south of here to the ambush site now. Hey, don't feel sorry for Bonnie and Clyde. They, they killed a lot of innocent people and, and robbed banks. They were not necessarily good people. They're not even like the villains that you wanna root for, just so you know. Uh, we'll head about eight miles south of here and go visit the death site here. Just remember, you know, back in the 30s, this was all dirt roads everywhere through here. So this is the place, everybody. This is the place where it all finally came to an end. The way it's been told is that the officers were over here in the bushes, looking downhill and up over that edge. And they fired. There's a truck coming right now. But they had to wait until one officer made a positive identification of Clyde from the driver's seat. And they pelted him with bullets right through here. And the car laid to rest right there where the RVs parked. I learned something at the museum that I didn't know about Clyde, and that was that he was actually a very good driver, a very good driver. He could evade and get away from any police chase that he ever encountered. He took corners really well. I don't know how fast he was bogging down this street, but for an officer across the road to have to know that that's him before they just start firing, you know, they, they were not just trying to injure him. They ambushed him. They put bullet holes all over both of them. This is a newer monument here. It says May 23rd, 1934, 9.15 a.m. The infamous outlaws Bonnie and Clyde met their demise at the hands of these dedicated law enforcement officials. Nice work, guys. And right next door to the newer monument is the older, more known one. This site, Clyde and Bonnie were killed by law officers, erected by the Benville Parish Police Jury. Guys, crime don't pay. It don't pay at all. This was a lot of fun. If you're ever in the area here nearby Gibbsville, Gibbsland, I already forgot what it's called. Anyway, got to check out the history on Bonnie and Clyde. It was really interesting. So just outside of Shreveport, Louisiana, is uh, Diamond Jack's Casino. I was going to look for just uh, RV, like boondocking, but it says RV park. So I'm actually going to go get some information. I don't know if it costs money to stay at the RV park. Actually, I might even do it for a night if it does. We shall see. All right, well, for the record, you guys know I, I don't go to RV parks very often. Um, I would be perfectly fine normally just boondocking in the parking lot with solar, but it is a little overcast and there isn't any sun and I wanna do some laundry. So these are full hookup sites right next to the casino for $22.50 on the weekdays. It might go up a little bit on the weekends, I'm not sure. But I'll be in site one right here. And uh, they got Wi-Fi and they got cable TV and um, they got a buffet inside the casino. So I am not even gonna get out and check for clearance because I can already see we're good. This is how I get settled here. I'm hooked up to 30 amp. I've got my water going in. I've got my sewer uh, permanently attached there. And on the way out, I will just fill up my onboard water tank. We'll top it off anyway. A couple things I'll just make mention of. This is how I'm keeping my Big Buddy heater covered when not in use. Uh, basically just to keep it dust free on the pads and to keep the heating element in there, uh, to keep that free of getting clogged or anything. And it's just a plastic bag, it just protects it. I'm not gonna be using that here though. I could use my onboard furnace if I want, since I have unlimited power. This would just be draining propane out of my tank, but since I'm paying for electric anyway, I've had this little ceramic heater for over three years now. I got this at a thrift store. It is solid, durable. It's 1500 watts, and it works so much better than the cheap ceramic ones they sell at Walmart these days. So since I'm paying for the power anyway, we can just set it to low, put the thermostat on something comfortable there, and we're gonna be able to stay warm. Hey, Jax. I may have to move that bed back here during the day. You sure spend a lot of time in that bed in the daytime. That's for driving only, buddy. That's for driving only. Uh, I had some people ask me about one of the ornaments on my tree, and I'm trying to remember if I explain it or not, but this character right here, I found this guy on eBay. This is Merlin from my favorite Disney movie of all time, The Sword in the Stone. Uh, not Gandalf, that is Merlin on my tree, just so everybody knows. I'll just swipe my Diamond Jack card here. 
which is included with an RV stay. And here's their laundry room. Two dryers, two washers, and ice. I know what you're probably thinking, Eric, you don't ever use your solar washer anymore? You know, just like Eric, you never put the cover on your scooter anymore? Just because I don't show it uh, every few days doesn't mean I'm not using it and enjoying it. Uh, my solar washer is great to have so that I can be more self-dependent on the road and not be dependent on having to make a stop at a laundromat once a week. With that said, if I don't need to do the laundry, I mean, I can fill two huge duffel bags and store them up top and just come here. And what I did is actually three loads. So this dryer is done in full, that dryer is done in full, and my last load just finished up here. And of course, I could have just stayed in the RV and used my little small washer and done a whole bunch of little loads and then dried them in the RV. And I could have saved about eight to nine dollars in quarters that I spent here. Uh, but since I, like I said, I paid for the spot anyway and includes this, it's kind of more convenient. It's a quicker way to get things done because I only made three trips here. And so, I mean, why not, right? I'm still gonna use my solar washer lots, lots and lots and lots. But like I said, why not? Going to get down into the upper 20s tonight and tomorrow. And uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is just not do anything else for the rest of the day. Not too cold to take the scooter out, but tomorrow, I'll take the scooter out and I'll film around Bossier City and Shreveport, Louisiana. Kind of make that my last day in Louisiana. I want to make a separate video. Let's go check out the buffet for dinner first.